Hi, this is Tom from zerodefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through hemochromatosis. You can find written notes on this topic at zerodefinals.com slash hemochromatosis or in the gastroenterology section of the Zero Finals Medicine book. So let's jump straight in. Hemochromatosis is an iron storage disorder that results in excessive total body iron and the deposition of iron in tissues. The human hemochromatosis protein, which is abbreviated to HFE, is encoded by a gene that's located on the chromosome 6, and the majority of cases of hemochromatosis relate to mutations in this gene. However, there are other genes that can also cause the condition. The hemochromatosis genetic mutation is inherited in an autosomal recessive way and the gene is important in regulating iron metabolism in the body which is why it causes an iron storage disorder. So what is the presentation of hemochromatosis? Well hemochromatosis usually takes a bit of time before enough iron builds up in the body for it to become symptomatic. So it usually presents after the age of 40 and it actually presents later in females due to menstruation acting to regularly eliminate blood and iron from the body so it takes longer for those iron stores to build up to the point where it causes symptoms and these symptoms usually come on after the menopause. So what kind of symptoms do you get? Well they can present with chronic tiredness, joint pain because of iron deposits in the joints causing arthritis, they can present with pigmentation or a bronze discoloration of their skin because of the iron deposits in the skin. They can present with hair loss. They can actually present with sexual problems such as erectile dysfunction or amenorrhea. And they can present with cognitive problems like problems with memory and mood disturbance. How do you make a diagnosis? Well, the main diagnostic method is to perform a serum ferritin level and ferritin is a type of iron in the blood. Ferritin is also an acute phase reactant, which means that it goes up when there's inflammatory conditions in the body. So this makes ferritin slightly unreliable because it can be high for causes other than hemochromatosis. We can perform a transferrin saturation, which is helpful in distinguishing between a high ferritin caused by iron overload, in which case the transferrin saturation will be high, from a ferritin caused by other causes like inflammation or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, in which case the transferrin will be low or normal. If serum ferritin and transferrin saturation are both high, this indicates iron overload, and there's no other explanation for these results, then genetic testing can be performed to confirm the diagnosis of hemochromatosis. We used to perform a liver biopsy and we did something called a pearl stain and that can be used to establish the iron concentration in the parenchymal cells of the liver and this used to be the gold standard investigation for diagnosing hemochromatosis. But since we have genetic testing, we don't use this method anymore but it might come up in your exams. A CT scan of the abdomen can also be used to show non-specific increased attenuation of the liver that might suggest iron overload in the liver tissue. And we can use an MRI scan to give a more detailed picture of the liver deposits of iron. And the MRI scan can actually be used to look at the iron deposits in the heart as well, which is one of the complications. Which brings us on to the complications of hemochromatosis. It can cause type 1 diabetes because the iron deposits and affects the functioning of the pancreas. It can cause liver damage and cirrhosis and all of the complications of cirrhosis. The iron can be deposited in the pituitary glands and in the gonads and this leads to endocrine and sexual problems such as hypogonadism where the gonads don't produce testosterone or estrogen. It can cause impotence, amenorrhea where the periods stop in women and infertility. It can cause cardiomyopathy where you get iron deposits in the heart that affect the functioning of the heart and lead to heart failure. It can cause hypothyroidism where iron is deposited in the thyroid gland and prevents the thyroid gland from producing adequate hormones. 
The liver cirrhosis can lead on to hepatocellular carcinoma, so cancer in the liver. And the iron overload can lead to chondrocalcinosis, which is basically calcium deposits in the joints, and this leads to arthritis. How do we manage hemochromatosis? Well, the key is we need to get rid of all of that excess iron in the body, and we do this through venesection, which is a weekly protocol of removing blood from the body, and along with that blood comes the extra iron. We carefully monitor the serum ferritin, and we need to monitor and treat any complications of the condition. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget there's plenty of other resources on the Zero to Finals website, including loads and loads of notes on various different topics that you might cover in medical school with specially made illustrations. There's also a whole test section where you can find loads of questions to test your knowledge and see where you're up to in preparation for your exams. There's also a blog where I share a lot of my ideas about a career in medicine and tips on how to have success as a doctor. And if you want to help me out on YouTube, you can always leave me a thumbs up, give me a comment or even subscribe to the channel so that you can find out when the next videos are coming out. So I'll see you again soon.